Hello and welcome back to NorCal 715. I get up this morning, I made some coffee last night before I went to bed, and got up this morning and there was no coffee in the pot. I thought, oh crap, I forgot to put water in it. So I open the lid up, take a look, it's full of water, obviously not right now. So I go grab my kilowatt and I put it on watts. It's off right now, 0.9 watts. Hit the power button. Green light lights up, and we look over here, and we're at 0.8 watts. Wow, it actually went down. Well, 0.9. So now, according to the specs on this model, 975 watts is what it should be drawing for the heating element. Not doing that. Let's take it apart. First thing, so you can see down in there where those screws are. There they are. Those aren't regular Phillips. You need to have a special bit if you want to get those babies out. I just happen to have a... Harbor Freight security bit assortment. That's the bit you're gonna to need to get it out. Yeah, so here's a close up of those screws and that little uh, driver you've gotta to have to get them out. Uh, these won't be going back in. I'll be replacing them with some standard screws so we never have to fall on this boat again. If I even get this unit repaired. All right, got the screws out and it uh, looks like I got some little snappies over here. We gotta get broken loose. Yep. There we go. So as you can see, a uh, little circuit board. And back over here in the corner is the power supply and the relay. Could be having a problem there. There's the uh, bimetallic thermal switch. And then we've got a couple of um, thermal cutouts, two of them in here, just in case something goes catastrophically wrong with the heating element, which resides in this little tube. So we'll get some uh, continuity tests on the uh, thermostat switch, as well as the uh, thermal fuses here before we go any farther. Okay, so I've got it focused in on the meter right now. So I'm gonna get my probes and check the heating element first off. And it looks like we lost the heating element because everything else, geez, unbelievable. Yep, we lost the heating element. Well, there's not much fixing that. Let's plug it back in, and we'll go ahead and turn it back on. Or the relay click. Let's go to volts. And uh, just make sure we got 120 volts on the heating element, just to verify. And we do, 121 volts. It's like you do these things intentionally. You sell us a product for under $20. You give it a one-year warranty. And this is under one year old. But in order to have this unit repaired, we have to pay return shipping to get it back to a service center. And so that's going to be between 10 and $15 one way. You may make us pay return shipping to get it back. So that's $30 on a less than $20 coffee pot. Unbelievable, this throwaway society that, that we live in today. It just, uh, they engineer stuff to just barely get by. So if this heating element is rated at 975 watts, according to the nameplate, it's probably actually capable of about 800 watts. So they run it at a higher uh, wattage than design specifications. It'll last a while that way. It won't last indefinitely, like the old coffee pots that our uh, grandparents had 50 years plus ago where they would go forever with no problem. Anyhow, my little rant. Okay, so I've got everything disconnected but the power. Here's the uh, bottom of the heating element. And uh, somewhere written on here is the uh, nomenclature. Or it is 120 volt. 120 volt, 975 watts. I or one. So as luck would have it, I don't have one. But, so on Whamart, I can buy a brand new one, same exact model, for $19.92. Or, check it out, found the replacement heating element on Amazon. And it's only $25.95. It just doesn't make sense. Uh, the heating element 
should be somewhere on Amazon or eBay for like six dollars if you can build this whole thing and sell it for under 20. So kind of looks like I'm going to be stopping uh, to buy a new coffee pot and uh, probably going to buy the warranty on it this time if they're making them this freaking chintzy. All right well here it is brand spanking new. I had a scratch on her. I haven't even opened it up for the first time yet so I just I just washed the uh, carafe here and I'm going to fill it up with water and uh, I've got my kilowatt plugged in here at the house. I want to see how much this heating element actually draws. So we're going to pass one full pot through before we do anything. Power on. So it's claimed 975 watts. I'm seeing 938, 940. Let's make sure that uh, we're at 118.8. Power factor is absolutely perfect. All right, we'll shut the lid. She should start dripping in there. Still going to get a hold of Black & Decker and see what they have to say. I may record the conversation and just post it anyhow. So we'll let you know how this goes. So I know one of the big things with the coffee maker is brewing temperature. So I've got my uh, oven probe wedged in there so the tip, which is where the sensing element is, is directly in the water flow. And so I'm looking over here. Uh, currently it's brewing at 180, 181. It's been in there for about 10 or 20 seconds. So, uh, it's actually brewing quite quickly. Uh, the pot's probably a quarter of the way full right now, and it's only been maybe about a minute and a half or two minutes. So we'll check back here when it gets near the top and see what we got. Then I'll dip it directly in the pot and see what we're at. So 185 degrees, 187. I'm not sure what the perfect brewing temperature is for coffee, but uh, we'll find out. Maybe somebody will post in comments. So according to this, we're at about uh, seven cups right now, so we're not quite halfway done. It claims to be a 12 cup coffee pot. Of course, uh, according to the label, those are five ounce servings. So you'll get 12 five ounce servings out of it. 185 right now, 187. We'll come back when it's about uh, just under the two mark down here. We'll take another peek at it. So we're down just under six cups. I wanna take a look at the uh, power right now. We're still at 938 watts. 940. I have a feeling it's going to uh, reach its peak and probably cycle off and then come back on. Because I did notice the temperature over here dropped down to like 181 and then it came back up. But we're certainly holding steady at about 935-940 watts. We're up to 189. We'll let it get done. 192 right now and we're down to about, uh, according to the little indicator, three cups remaining. We're still at a very constant 937, 938 watts. Just dropped down to 190, then back up to 192. I think it's because it's kind of coming sporadically at the moment, where it uh, pulses and then it stops, and it pulses and it stops. Okay, here we are, almost done. 198, 196, 198, 194. It's definitely uh, gurgling an awful lot right now. So I think it's very near the end. You can see it's still running in right there. Just looked and it was at 940, went back down to 938. Judging by the sounds that it's making, it's virtually empty at this moment. And we got a temperature now of 199. So it should cycle off here in just a minute. Once it, uh, once the temperature gets high enough that that thermostatic uh, snap disc, the thermostat, opens, it'll go ahead and cycle off. We're at 201 right now. All right, just cycled off, so it's done. It's going to cool down for just a little bit, then it should cycle back on here in a second. So while it's doing that, let's go ahead. There, it just clicked on. I heard it. Let's look back over here and see. 944 watts, 945 right now. 
So I'm going to go ahead and pull the thermometer out and I'm going to put it directly in the carafe. I don't know, you guys tell me what is the perfect temperature for brewed coffee. Looks like we're at 192. Anyhow, there it is, brand spanking new, $20 coffee pot from Walmart, Black & Decker. Went ahead and got the same one again. I was very happy with the results. The coffee tasted absolutely great in this thing. And I didn't want to move to a different brand and uh, possibly compromise the flavor of the taste. I am showing that I would be able to exchange it for you. There would just be a few requirements that you would have to send in for the exchange. So what you would need to do is make sure the unit is unplugged. You would need to cut the cord off about two to three inches from where it would go into the wall socket. And you're going to mail just the end piece plug back to us. You'll send that in with a note with your name and address and a brief description of what was wrong with the unit. Copy of the receipt if you still have that. There's also going to be a warranty shipping fee of $7.50 all right well look what i got in the mail today from spectrum brands a black and decker cm 1160b which is a year newer than the coffee pot that i was replacing anyhow it took seven dollars and fifty cents to get this unit plus the price of shipping the end of the ac cord back to them because there is a date code imprinted on it and so this new one has a code on the bottom, uh, kind of hard to see, 1903-CV it looks like. Anyhow, if you have a defective Black & Decker coffee maker, and it is a Spectrum Brands product, I'm sure it says on here, yes it does, imported by Spectrum Brands right here. Uh, if you have a problem with it, and it is within the two year warranty period, and you have a copy of your sales receipt, I did have to email them a copy of my sales receipt, then for $7.50 of shipping, which is purely bogus, they should ship it out for free because it's their defect, but for $7.50 of shipping, uh, plus the price you have to pay, I ended up putting it in a very lightweight envelope, and I put two U.S. postage stamps on the cut off end of the AC cord because it was under uh, two ounces and a check for $7.50 and then they will send you a brand new replacement coffee maker back out with another two year warranty. Make sure you keep your packing slip that shows the date that it was shipped back out on. Ship date 6-29-19. So that way, should you have a problem with this, you can call them back up and go, hey, you know, you sent me this brand new coffee pot a year ago and it's broken already. Anyhow, I certainly hope you enjoyed this video. If the video has made a difference, please consider making a donation on my YouTube homepage with the PayPal donate button or at paypal.me slash NorCal715. Everybody have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.